All right, so in the previous video, we talked about what welding is, how we are fusing metals together. Together, We also just touched on how it could be harmful to us if we don't protect ourselves appropriately. So the way we protect ourselves, or rather, what we protect ourselves from is, number one, we are protecting ourselves from visible light. Then number two, we're going to protect ourselves from ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light is that light that will give you a sunburn. And three, we're protecting ourselves from the infrared light. Infrared light is light felt as heat. You will feel that heat from that welding process. So we have to protect ourselves from those things. There's a few other things we have to protect from, but we're going to start with those. So the first one, the thing that's most synonymous with welding is probably the hood, the welding mask. This has a shade in it for stick welding, for shielded metal arc welding. That's what stick welding is. We have a metal filler rod and then we have a shielded part of that. This, we're going to touch on that later. This is shielded metal arc welding when you're welding with a stick, an electrode. That's what this is called, an electrode. So getting back, when we are stick welding or shielded metal arc welding, we need a shade that's appropriate. We use a number 10 shade or greater. You can use an 11, you can use a 12, you can get a automatic helmet where you can adjust it or you can just get a number 10 shaded helmet those are cheap that's what i learned on that's what i used for years and years and years so it's totally fine to use a regular number 10 shade in your helmet with that helmet though you need to have a cap you need to have a cap because sparks fly now this cap is obviously not mine it's way too small so i'll just pop it up like that. So a cap can protect you from any sparks that are flying. When we are striking arc, when we are welding, there will be sparks that are falling and we need to protect ourselves from those sparks. The first way is with a cap. Some people like to have that little cap over their ear. Some people just like to use a ball cap and turn it backwards. I don't care what you use as long as you're using something to protect yourself and for those lucky people that have hair, protect your hair from sparks that may get in there and burn your hair. So a cap is essential with the mask. The next thing on your head that you need, you need this whenever you're working folks, you need to have safety glasses. I got videos talking about safety glasses. We won't go over that too far, but you have to wear safety glasses underneath your hood. And we will talk about why that is essential in another video once we get to actually welding. And the final thing on your head that you'll need is you'll need some earplugs. When you're welding, like we said, it gives off sparks. Those sparks can fly up to 25 feet. So protect your, your ear canal by just putting some little foamies in. That's all you need. Just, just uh, less than a dollar. Got some little foamies, put them in and you're covered. So now our head is covered. Now we need to cover our body. You always need to wear pants that are not sweatpants, not flammable pants, and you need to have some sort of shoes that are not the um, polyester, the mesh, not sandals. You need it to cover your toes. Preferably leather is best. That's why a lot of our welding jackets are leather. So leather shoes are good and then your denim jeans are good, but you need a jacket because that's where most of the sparks are going to be flying. This is just a regular jacket, it's not super expensive. If you look at it, you'll see all kinds of burns. You see how this is, it's more black in here because when you're holding that, that stinger, that electrode holder, you're having all those sparks drop on you, okay? so. You need to protect yourself with a jacket and then you need actual welding gloves. These are actual welding gloves. We call them the gauntlet style to where they have a gauntlet type. They have a longer cuff here that protect. You can put your coat inside your glove. 
So that way when you're welding like this, any sparks are going down and they're not getting caught in here. These are not welding gloves. Yes, they are leather. They are not insulated. They're not lined and they don't have a very big cuff to protect yourself. I highly, highly recommend and make all my students have the gauntlet style gloves that are insulated. They protect their hands, not only from sparks, but also from the heat that is built up when we weld. So those are the things we need, folks. Gloves, jacket, pants that are not sweatpants or running pants or anything polyester, because polyester will burn, okay? It will melt, and if it melts to the skin, that's a bad day, okay? So gloves, jacket, pants, preferably leather shoes or boots, welding hood with your cap, safety glasses, and earplugs. These are must-haves. You have to have this to weld here.